everybody, I'm Chef Sarah, and today I'm sharing our ultimate New Orleans travel guide for foodies. That's right, we're spending two days in New Orleans where we're showing you everywhere we ate and drank for the ultimate foodie vacation in NOLA. We only have 48 hours to eat the best of the best, so let's get started. What do you think? Our red eye from Dallas was delayed, and we landed after midnight. So our first challenge was to find some great late night eats. This foodie tour of New Orleans was actually a surprise for Sarah's birthday, and one of her first surprises was where we were staying, the historic Hotel Monteleone. I chose the Monteleone for several reasons. First, it's situated in the French Quarter, within walking distance of almost every bar and restaurant recommended by locals. It's a historic luxury hotel, once frequented by famous patrons such as Tennessee Williams, William Faulkner, and Ernest Hemingway. But let's be real, we're mostly here to see the world-renowned Rotating Carousel Bar, one of the most famous bars in the world. After checking in, we dump our luggage and we're out the door to our first stop. It's the 24-hour restaurant and bar Daisy Dukes and it's located about 10 minutes away on foot. Daisy Dukes is your best bet for extremely late night eats as almost everything else is closed by midnight. Okay, first meal in New Orleans. It's two o'clock in the morning, but we found some grub. I got gumbo. He like a true Texan came all the way to New Orleans for chicken fried steak. With hash browns and eggs. Outrageous. It was a pretty good damn good gumbo for two o'clock in the morning, I'll tell you that. It's hot, but it's good. Then we fall asleep anticipating a busy first day in New Orleans. We're starting our morning off with beignets, and we decided to visit Café Beignet, a local favorite for fresh pastries and chicory coffee in the French Quarter. Good morning from New Orleans. This is my very first beignet. Beignets are like a fried donut with powdered sugar on them. So let's do this thing. It's like a sopapilla. <laughs> They're chewier. I want more sugar. At Cafe Beignet, diners can sip their coffee and mingle in a historic courtyard overlooking Royal Street. And if you're lucky, you might even get serenaded by a street entertainer. I would do this every day. Yeah. Following our foodie map, we're now heading towards the French Market area. This route takes you right through Jackson Square, where we stop a moment to view the historic park and the architecture. Let's go eat. Now that we've walked off some calories, we're heading to Central Grocery. It's the birthplace of the Muffalata Sandwich. You can see Central Grocery has a lot more to offer foodies than a famous sandwich. You can find Italian imports, hard to find specialty ingredients, and classic Cajun food products like praline liqueur. If you're likely to buy a lot of stuff here at Central Grocery, I recommend making this your last stop before going back to your hotel, and do not miss that original muffalata. Ooh, that was good. What do you think? First muffalata. It's really hard because I'm friends with the Maceos in Galveston and they make an excellent muffalata. It tastes a lot like this though. <laughs> nice. After that amazing muffalata, we decide that it's time for our first drink. And what better to start off with than the New Orleans famous hurricane? <laughs> <laughs> if you can't tell, I really liked that Hurricane Egazebo Cafe, so we decided to head to the bar that reportedly invented them. 
the legendary Pat O'Brien. Pat O'Brien's has been a fixture in New Orleans since 1933 and is not only famous for its hurricanes, but also its dueling piano show. We're shown to a table in the open air courtyard, which is our favorite place to sit, and quickly proceed to getting to some of the very strong cocktails they offer. After stumbling out of Pat O'Brien's, we head back to our hotel. And despite our best efforts, we didn't quite make it to our room. So we're currently at the carousel bar at the Hotel Montreal. That's moving slowly. You can't see it, but it is. And Derek is stalking every single table that he can because he doesn't like our table. But I think it's great! Uh -oh. Every time, there's already someone who's going to stop. What's been your favorite drink? Uh, 57 Chevy at Pat O'Brien's. 57 Chevy at Pat O'Brien's. Was Pat O'Brien's like you thought it would be? No, it wasn't like her bar. Like there's an outside a piano bar, there's a main bar. Like it was way better. It's like an entertainment venue, more so than a bar. It's definitely worth going to. The Carousel Bar really turned out to be the place to see and be seen in the French Quarter. And honestly, it had the best cocktails we've ever had in all of our travels worldwide. For dinner, there are plenty of white tablecloth options, and we decide on Antoine's Restaurant. From the best-selling mystery novel, Dinner at Antoine's. Antoine's opened in 1840 and is renowned for impeccable French Creole cuisine. Antoine's invented dishes such as oysters Rockefeller and pomme de terre souffle, which is sort of a puffed potato with hollandaise, so you absolutely must try it. After dinner, we head back to the hotel anticipating a big second day in New Orleans. It's early morning Saturday and we're headed to the Ruby Slipper Cafe. You give us a drink. Where's Bloody Mary? Bacon Bloody Mary. Okay, that's good. <clears throat> Can you taste the bacon? A little bit, yeah. For breakfast, it's Bananas Foster's French Toast and creamy and decadent barbecue shrimp and grits, which is evidently also a breakfast food here. Next, we hit the streets for a little bit of souvenir shopping before making our way to Acme Oyster House for those world-famous char-grilled oysters. Like us, you might associate New Orleans cuisine with gumbo, but we're learning it's the char-grilled oysters that the locals obsess about. Gulf oysters on the half shell are doused in garlic butter, topped with creamy parmesan, and grilled to juicy perfection. We also try fried crab claws dipped in creamy remoulade sauce. Remoulade sauce is kind of the spicier version of tartar sauce and it's served everywhere in New Orleans. It's got a heavy dose of horseradish. Next, our waitress sends us around the corner to Mr. B's Bistro, a special occasion spot that Zagat describes as a French Quarter masterpiece. This is a great place for dinner, and if you're trying to hit as many restaurants as possible, you can order many of their iconic dishes while grabbing a beer from the bar. Wow. Better than yours? Yep, soft joke. For dinner, we took a short Uber ride to Giacomo's because all Sarah's chef friends insist it's a must-do for any trip to New Orleans. Diners walk through a bar that looks like a set from True Blood and then right through the restaurant's kitchen into the dining room. In order to eat as many different tastes as we could, we order practically the entire appetizer menu. It includes stuffed shrimp, fried green tomatoes with shrimp remoulade, cheese stuffed boudin balls, their world famous shrimp and alligator sausage cheesecake, Creole jambalaya that I still have dreams about, and a hearty duck and andouille gumbo that was fantastic. Okay. 
So you can hang out here for hours, but we've got a few more places to hit before we go back tomorrow. Every single local we met told us if we loved Acme Oyster House, then we had to go to Drago's because they invented the Charger Oyster. So that's where we're headed next. Drago's oysters are the best, but I am Team Acme Oyster all the way. We just went to Drago's, and Sarah did not like Drago's as much as Acme, so we came back to Acme. Drink along top. It's like, at first it hits you like it's creamy, but then you're like, this is uncooked rich. So I was like, we have to get back to Acme because that can't be our last charcoal oyster. The charcoal oysters here, you like them, why? Um, there's a lot of juice, and you can tip. They're real plump and juicy, they're real big fat oysters, and they don't have big cheese on top, they don't have flour. We come to a truce over the banana sponsored cheesecake and decide to call it a night. Well, that is a wrap, technically, right? Unfortunately, yes. We're so full. We're, you know that feeling when you're uncomfortably full? Full of New Orleans. Yeah, <laughs> it's such a good feeling. So that's how we are. We're going to go back to the hotel room because we have to get up really early to get back yep. to Dallas. But and our babies. ever. Best trip ever. And we're going to write everything up that we did and put it on the blog at urbancalgirllife.com. You guys can come here and do all of the same stuff we did. Oh, there's the Hotel Montleon. Is that how you say Monte it? Monteleon. Monteleon, they're all teaching us different ways. So, pretty soon you're going to be here. You're going to do exactly what we did. We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye. like a po' boy on the plane. Right. So we're getting even on the way home while we think of all the delicious things to cook.